Hello. Today I'm going to be talking about methods that I've tried and tested that have had a significant effect on my ability to interact with people. These techniques are great, but they're mainly geared towards people on the autistic spectrum. But they will also help guys and girls who are finding it hard to get to grips with talking to people, making friends, and dating. It may or not be known to you, but people on the spectrum don't have that kind of innate ability that um, people without Asperger's and autism have in terms of communicating and also in terms of picking up social cues. Thus, people with autism and Asperger's need some way of learning to do social interaction. So this can come from sources of information and also from observing other people. So without further ado, here are my five tips for improving your social game. So to start off with, this is one of the most powerful techniques that I found that works, um, especially when you have quite a low self-esteem and you don't really know how to get a conversation started. Basically, all you're gonna do is just throw a little comments out there to people. Now, it might sound quite silly when I say it, but you realize why it's so important to do that in a second. The beauty of doing this is that you don't have to have that much thought and anxiety about a conversation you'll be able to test whether the person wants to speak to you and you'll also be able to get a bit of confidence if they start a conversation with you as well. By putting no investment into this, um, you'll be less likely to come away from an interaction that maybe didn't go as, as well as you wanted it to without feeling any of those kind of a negative, negative emotions that might turn you off trying to uh, start a conversation with someone else again. Once you realise that talking really isn't a big deal, and you don't need to go into social interactions with like a big script of things that you need to talk about and ask, you'll find it a lot easier to be comfortable and that will in turn make people more likely to talk to you and you'll be more likeable. So usually the way that you can you can see whether someone wants to talk to you is if um, you throw out a little comment about the situation and they throw a comment back to you or they ask you a question. Now these are really good in indicators that the person wants to initiate a conversation with you. If they say something like, yeah, or kind of giggle and look away, um, they probably don't want to talk to you, and you shouldn't take that in a bad way. They might just not be confident enough to start a conversation with a stranger. So I find the easiest way to, to use this technique is to wait for any of the following scenarios. So if you're waiting for something and something happens, that you think uh, another person might agree on. For example, I like to use the analogy of you standing in like a queue at a supermarket or something, and in front of you there's maybe maybe a girl or a guy that you want to talk to. Um, further down the line or further back, there's some people arguing. So maybe there's like a couple arguing, or a staff member getting in trouble, something like that. And so you can you can throw out comments like. You can you can laugh a little bit at it and say, "Oh, I wonder what's going on there." And um, if the person person that's near you wants to speak to you, then they'll they'll make a comment out about it as well. It's also good to use a lot of humor in these situations, as humor can d diffuse a lot of um, tension that you might have talking to strangers. You can say something like, in in, in res regard to that analogy, you can say something like, "Makes me glad I'm not in a relationship." which um, if you make someone laugh, um, they're more likely to like you as a person, which is psychologically proven. So if you find the first one a bit too daunting, though, there are some other ways that you can go about using this technique in order to prove your confidence. Um, for example, you're walking back from a train station or you're walking, you're walking through your hometown to go home and there's a homeless person at the side. Now, so you can you can get like a little bit of change out, um, get some change, maybe UP or something, maybe a quid if you if you're that generous. Um, but you can ask, you can say, "Oh, how's your day going?" And they can they can give a little comment back. And if they're wanting to talk to you, then you can have a little bit of an exchange and then say, "All right, I need to get off. Um, hope you have a good day." And there you go, you've you've had a conversation with someone. And once you get the confidence to start conversations with random people, you can maybe move up to the first one, and you can maybe um, approach people in different situations like parties and such. 
So seriously, using this, this technique is really powerful because it doesn't put much investment in and it also gives, gives you the opportunity to test the water and see if the person wants to speak to you. Using this quite a few times instead of going in with like all scripts and managed to get, get a few numbers from people and it's, it's a lot easier to come across as more kind of a laid back person. So number two might be quite um, obvious to some people but working on your confidence and your self esteem is a big part in both being comfortable with talking to people and also being attractive to people as well. If you feel like you're kind of a, a prize or a catch or something you're more likely to be more lax in situations and um, you can treat treat the guys that you know mates that you know and you, know, you can treat strangers that you know um, you can meet strangers that you meet as like mates that you've, you've known for a long time and that'll make them feel a lot more at ease with you and you can treat girls like bratty little sisters and you can tease anything like that and it'll generally, it'll generally give give a good aura off to people that you are confident and you're open to having conversations with people as well. With the confidence you'll feel like people want to talk to you and you'll feel wanted and that kind of confidence and self-esteem that you put out there will actually become a reality so if you feel like you're wanted and people want you and want to talk to you then it'll usually happen because you'll put off that confident and friendly aura that will draw people to you naturally. So the next technique is maybe quite controversial to most people but it comes from saying fake it till you make it. Now this is mostly for people on the spectrum um, as, the, the, as, as I said before the innate social abilities that people neurotypicals or people not on the spectrum have um, they already know how to do this and it's inbuilt naturally into them. So first thing I would have you do is search up some YouTube celebrities um, for example um, relating to media uh, around the time that I made this video uh, David Hay um, just any any kind of person that gives off a good vibe of confidence but also friendliness and maybe maybe attractive and mysterious anyone that you you admire as a as a person and you'd want to have a conversation with um so once once you get that person and you watch them you see how they interact you see the facial features you see the body language like hands and stuff and how slow they speak and how deep they speak what they say you generally get an idea of how being confident um, with speaking and how the person who is confident speaks and that will help you. Now as I said you might feel a bit wrong with doing this because it might it might not really gel with your personality but I really reckon that you deal with this because it's based on a scientific fact called cognitive dissonance which is when how you act and how you feel or think are different. Now this will cause some discomfort for you because you'll be like why am I acting like this? Why am I doing this? But after a while the, the dissonance will affect, because you, you, you're acting the same way all the time, the dissonance will affect how your brain thinks. So naturally over time by faking this kind of persona you'll it'll be integrated into you. You won't become David Hay just by trying to act like him. I don't know why you'd want to, but that's <laughs> personal opinions. Um, but it will be integrated into you, and you will you develop some of the the positive traits that the celebrity has, which is the confidence and the ability to talk to people. It will benefit you greatly in your social situations. The next one is quick and simple. The best way to feel comfortable is to join a sports club that you like. Now, if you have some social anxiety issues, that might be a problem and talking to people might be a problem in general I reckon you go for something that's easy um, but also something that, that's going to raise your heart rate as well so chess club's probably not a good idea it doesn't really stimulate conversation and it doesn't really get your body moving now the main reason why you want to raise your heart rate want to get your body moving is to stimulate release of adrenaline 
Um, so releasing this adrenaline um, gets you very concentrated. Um, exercise also releases a hormone called serotonin, um, which on a vague basis of science, it'll make you feel better and make you feel more at ease. And these are very good things to have because when you're focusing on your sport, you're less likely to focus on other people. And having that kind of passive conversation during your sport, like uh, badminton, something like that, um, you'll be able to connect with people, but you won't feel that kind of pressure to uh, answer questions and give questions and generally have what you perceive to be a normal social situation. As well as these, these hormones that will make it easier for, to, for you to interact with people, you'll also be meeting with people and being around people regularly. So you'll get used to being around people. There'll be quite a lot, might, might be quite a lot of people doing badminton. You might be rotating. This will mean that you're not, you're getting yourself out there and people can see, see you and they can, they can see you multiple times. And the, the more times they see you, the more higher the likelihood is that they're going to come over and say hi. And um, especially if they find you attractive. And if you're particularly skilled at the sport that you're doing, um, you'll give off a lot of confident vibes doing that sport and you'll also be may, might be able to impress people with it as well so they might go wow you're so good at this and you know what it's like talking about your special interests so well, that, that might be a good thing for you maybe maybe tone it down a little bit just keep it lax use that adrenaline use that serotonin just relax into it and just have a good time the last point that i have is really important um, in my books it's really easy for people on the spectrum to get what I call um, socially saturated. Uh, so basically this is where you can't get any more pleasure, if, if you get any pleasure, from being around other people. This can be anybody. Um, there's been a lot of cases where people I really like um, being in a relationship with, I just kind of didn't want to speak at all because you just, you just fit. it's hard to explain. But anyway, you must know and identify when you start to get these feelings. This will save you from uh, losing your will to talk to people. Um, and if you lose your will to talk to someone and you, you kind of space out and you, you don't really seem very interested, that can harm your chances of developing a good friendship. So it's, it's good to know when, when to leave a conversation or when to leave a situation in order to maintain that positive kind of high energy vibe that people have with you. When you reach this point of saturation, step out, take a breather, and maybe later you might feel the need to socialize again. With this, you also uh, be less likely to experience any bad uh, situations. Um, for example, as I said, people can get, can get the idea that you're maybe a bit bored of them or something, and that might be quite daunting to someone, um, especially if you're, you're not very confident with your social skills. I go, oh god, this person hates me now and panic and say something stupid and one feel leads to another, etc. Put an example to this. I might go out to one of my Taekwondo competitions um, abroad. So this may be, it might be three or four days of constant, constant being around people all the time. Talking to people on the plane, in the car, in rooms and apartments, because we have to share apartments, competition venues. And also during fighting when there's there's loads of crowds and it's just completely just overloads your system. And after this, after this getting getting home, after all of this, it can be it can be really, really all of it can be really really taxing on on your system, your physically and mentally. And I might go for maybe one or two days just completely alone, just to kind of recover from all that social interaction that I've had. Uh, this is a bit of an extreme um, example of being socially saturated, but it just shows that how you need to you need to identify that you have autism, you have Asperger's, and this is going to happen. And you need to take measures to make sure that it doesn't impact you negatively as much as you can help it. So this has been five Thomas's top tips for helping with. Uh, boosting your social interaction abilities and also improving your confidence in situations. And all of this will help you feel more happy and feel more like a inclusive member of society. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, 
leave a like if you want to see more content by me um, subscribe and if there's any content that you could suggest anything that you'd like to talk about or maybe just give your own ideas stick it in the comment section and I'll be sure to reply to it as soon as I can. Thank you YouTube.